Hi everyone and welcome back to my series on how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. In this episode, we will look at how we can knock back the player when it's being hit by an enemy. I have a few ways of doing this, but in this episode we will stick to the simpler one. Combined with other effects we can add later on, this can surely be sufficient for a lot of games. So let's get started. We start by opening the player script. And at the bottom, we create a new function called knockback. Now we need to figure out what direction the knockback should move the player in. Velocities are stored in 2D vectors in Godot. For those of you who doesn't really know much about vector math, you can just think of a vector as an arrow of a certain length pointing in a certain direction. And adding two vectors together result in a new direction, and the same goes for subtracting two vectors. We will need this later on. Okay, so let's first try letting the knockback move the player in the opposite direction it came from. We create a new variable to store the knockback direction. And set it to minus velocity. Then we move the player using the move and slide function. And then we call the knockback function where the player is being heard. Now let's test to see what happens. Well, it kinda looks like nothing is happening at all. So let's add a few print debug to see what actually happens. I print the velocity and then the player's position before and after the move and slide function. And I also add an extra empty print to make it easier to read the debug prints. When we test again and look at the debug prints, we see that the player's position is actually changed, but only a very little. This is because the move and slide function automatically multiplies its input with the time since the last frame, which is of course really really low and way less than a whole second. To fix this, we go to the top of the script and add a new export variable called knockback power and set it to 500 as a start. Then back in the knockback function, we first normalize the velocity and then multiply it with the knockback power. Now we test again and we can see that the player is moved back when it moves into the enemy. However, when the player isn't moving and gets hit, nothing happens. This is because we are only using the player's velocity to create the knockback direction. Instead, we can use both the enemy's and the player's velocity to create the knockback. This is where vector math comes in handy. Imagine the enemy moves in this direction. And the player is moving in this direction. The knockback from the player is then this vector. And we can then add this to the enemy's vector to get a new knockback vector here. This is the same as having the enemy's vector and subtracting the player's velocity vector. We now go back to the script and change the knockback direction to be the enemy's velocity minus the current velocity. This is then normalized and multiplied by the knockback power as before. The knockback vector now needs the enemy's velocity to work. So we add this as an input to the function. And when we call the function, we add area.getParent.Velocity to get the enemy's velocity. Now let's test again. The knockback might seem a bit harsh if you've turned off limit smoothing on the camera. 
but I won't make a final decision as to whether it should be on or off in the final game just yet. I will wait until we've added more things to the game. Remember to also experiment with the knockback power. Do you want it higher? Or maybe lower? This can change a lot during development. Your preference might change once you add more things to the game. And that's all for this episode. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll come back next time. Bye!